All right. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Thank you. All right. We've already heard from, uh, we could go now. We've already heard from uh, Linda about Luke. Jesus was born. And let's just look at that for a moment. Uh, I want you to turn to Genesis chapter 3, verse 15, to put it on the board. Put the King James up there first, because we know this, we're celebrating the birth of Christ. But it was prophesied all the way back into Genesis that God would send him to be born in a manger in Bethlehem. That was prophesied. It was in the Bible. You go all the way back to Genesis chapter 3, verse 15. And we'll see that in the King James first. That's 1 Timothy 3, 1. Genesis, Genesis chapter 3, verse is that for me? <laughs> Chapter 15. Genesis 3, 15. We'll get there. Genesis 3, 15. How many is happy besides me? All right. Now, God is speaking. When you read the Bible, find out who's speaking. Paul, James, John, God, Moses, whatever. And I will put enmity between thee. And who is thee? Satan. And the woman. And who was the woman? Really, Mary. Mary. And between thy seed and her seed. Between thy seed. That first seed belongs to who? Satan. And her seed. And who is her seed? Jesus. It shall bruise. It. What? That seed. Jesus shall bruise thy head. Satan's head. And thy shall and thy, that is, Satan shall bruise his heel. Now put the Amplified up there. See, I'm, I'm teaching. You need to know that all the way back that the Savior was promised, really before the foundation of the world. All right, here we have the Amplified. And I will put enmity between you, that is, Satan, and the woman, and between your offsprings, and her offsprings. He, now who is he? Jesus. Will bruise and tread your head underfoot, and you, that is Satan, will lie in wait and bruise his. Who's his there? Jesus heel. How, is that new to some folk? Let me see your hands if, that, if that's new to you. You all knew that. All right, back there, you're learning. You're here to learn. We're here to learn, to realize that all the way back there in the garden, God knew before the foundation of the world that man would fall. Now, we're not going to go into all the theology of that. You just need to know that God knows everything, okay? And so God planned way back there, from this time right here where we're at, that's literally 6,000 years back, that he had Moses to pin that down for us. So we see something there that's really great. Turn, if you will, now to, uh, on the board, Micah 5.2. Micah 5.2. And we'll see in the Old Testament that Jesus was forecast. But you, Bethlehem, I don't know if I can pronounce that, pronounce that word correctly, per, for Rapidus, somebody help me. All right, why is that in there? There's two Bethlehems over there, two Bethlehems, and the one that's the closest to this, Epapitas, you are little to be among the clan of Judah, that is Bethlehem. That Bethlehem that's close to Epapitas, I'm really messing that up good. 
Yet out of you, out of Bethlehem, you shall one come forth. Who's that one? See the capital O there? Always remember, capital H, capital letter means, mostly means Christ or God. Shall one, that is Christ, shall come forth for me, that is, who is to be ruler, that is, Christ is to be ruler in Israel, whosoever, whose goings forth has been from of old, from ancient days, eternity. So Christ was with God back in eternity. Christ is God, manifest in the flesh, okay? So Christ always existed with God the Father, and he volunteered to come down here as that seed, as that little baby Jesus, and then grow up to be a man. And he came to this earth to die. But I got good news for you. He didn't stay died. <laughs> he didn't stay dead. He rose again. And he lives right now to intercede as our high priest in heaven. And brother, that's something to praise him for. Death could not hold him. I like that song. You might have heard it. Go ahead and drive the nails in my hands. I'll rise again. And he did by the power of the Holy Spirit. The Bible says that same spirit that raised Christ from the dead shall quicken your mortal bodies. That same spirit that raised Christ from the dead shall quicken our mortal bodies now and at the resurrection. We may die, that is our bodies, but they're not going to stay dead. They're going to be transformed into a resurrected body and our spirits will unite with those resurrected bodies. This salvation that we preach is tremendous. <coughs> Excuse me. So we'll see Jesus in the Old Testament. Turn, if you will, now on the board, Genesis 49.10. 49.10. I've got to get used to this. The scepter or leadership shall not depart from Judah, nor the ruler's staff from between his feet until Shiloh the Messiah, Shiloh, that's Jesus, the Messiah, the peaceful one, comes to whom it belongs, and to him shall be the obedience of the people. Boy, I love that. I know we all struggle with this thing on obedience, and I'm here to encourage, not to condemn but mark it, starting from the day that you're going to do your best to be obedient. And it's not really that hard. I learned a lot from my wife. And she would always say, do what you're supposed to do when you're supposed to do it. I want to say that again. And sometimes you have to get off the couch to do that. Sometimes you might have to turn the TV off to do that. Come on now, love me a little bit. Bobby, would you take the trash out? Test. Everybody say test. test. My obedience. Let me say something. You know how careful I am or trying to be in my speaking because I want to say the right word. A lot of times people don't know that they're being obedient to God by the woman being submissive to their husband. <laughs> Go ahead and laugh, Charles. <laughs> Oh, Solomon. <laughs> well, let's see if I can get out of this trap I, found, I put myself in. And sometimes the husband doesn't know he is being obedient to God by doing what his wife says. Come on, now we'll get some, we'll get some hallelujahs in this place. Uh, uh, 
I know some of you are up, but you're not woke up yet, but I'll get you stirred anyway. Sometimes you might not know being obedient to your pastor is being obedient to God. Two people over on this side shook their head, the other went on this side. Everybody. I love you, but I tell you what, you'll suffer the consequence. Okay, let's get off that, Bob. <clears throat> From this day on, I'm going to learn to be obedient. Go ahead, say it. One person on the front row. Two people. All right. From this day on, I'm going to be obedient. Prop obedience. Oh, boy, that's getting excited. You will find that's where the blessings are. I'm big enough in God. If you tell me to, to wash your feet, I could wash your feet right now. I'm big enough in God. You can call me whatever you want to call me, but I know who I am in God. I know what he's done for me. My faith don't depend on how you see me or not. I hope you love me like a brother for your good, for your good. But if you don't love your brother whom you see, how can you love God whom you don't see? Come on, don't shout me down. So enough with all of the uh, pride stuff, and we're going to walk humbly together. And I might tell you to do something. I had a young man tell me that. I want to be an evangelist. Said, Fine, wonderful. And I want to submit to you. Wonderful. When do I start preaching? Oh, about three years or four years from now. First, I want you to go back there and clean that bathroom. I hadn't seen him since. Anyway, we'll move from there. God will start us off with the little thing. If you're faithful in that which is little, God will make you faithful in that which is what? Much. That's the way God works. Some of you are not smiling at me. <laughs> uh, you don't know what to make of me, do you? Uh, boy, God has turned me upside down all kind of ways. I am what I am by the grace of God. Hallelujah. All right, let's move on. What scripture was that? All right. So, and to him shall be the obedience of the people. Wow. That's powerful. So we see that uh, Okay, we won't do that next one. That, that one is what I wanted. Okay, let's go to uh, Psalms chapter 2, verse 6 and 7. Psalms. And what I'm doing, I'm going over to the Old Testament, building our case on up to the New Testament, and let you know that we see Christ in the old and the new. Now, we're under a new covenant. There are things in the old covenant that don't apply to us anymore. But there are many things in the Old Covenant that does apply to the church. We have to understand that and get the balance in that. Now, all the rituals and the sacrifices of all those animals, uh, I didn't see Bill bring a sheep in here today and split his throat and, and give it to me where I have to put it on the altar. Aren't you glad? You don't have to. See, those sacrificial offerings... But there are things that are not fulfilled yet still in the Old Testament that prophesied, and those things will be fulfilled. For example, the second coming of Christ is in the Old Testament. The rapture is not in the Old Testament. That is a New Testament mystery that was given to the Apostle Paul. So when you read the Bible, you've got to learn to say, these scriptures belong to the second coming, these scriptures belong to the rapture. How many of you understand what I'm talking about? Okay, you need to understand that if you go study the scriptures. So Isaiah 9, 6 and 7. Yet have I anointed, installed, and placed my king hmm, firmly on my holy hill of Zion. Who is that king? That's Old Testament. Somebody tell me. Jesus. You got that? Jesus. In the Old Testament. Next verse, that same Seven, I will declare the decree of the Lord. He said to me, God said to Jesus, me, you are my son. 
This day I declare I have begotten you. That's in the Old Testament. That's in Psalms chapter 2, verse 7. I will declare the decree of the Lord. He said to me, to Jesus, you are my son. Capital S, that's Jesus. This day I declare I have begotten you. You'll also find that in the New Testament. All right, so we're going through the Old Testament. All right, go to Isaiah 9, 6, and 7. Isaiah 9, 6, and 7. Go to, the, go to 6. Verse 6, Willie. 9, 6. Is it hot in here? All right, we all familiar with this scripture. For to us a child is born. For to us. I wonder who us is. A child is born. All right, you could say the Israelites or to us. To us a son is given. A son is given. John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. A child is born. Who is that child? Jesus. And he is born. But I thought he existed with the Father. In eternity, he did. But his fleshly body that was to be offered on that altar and on that cross, which was the altar, was born in Bethlehem, the Son of Man. He was God, but he was man. So that body, that child, came forth. And that child was born to die on that cross for your sins and my sins. Now look what it says. The son was given, so God gave his son. See, <clears throat> when you read the scriptures, you always keep in mind death and life. Death works in us. That, might, that life might work in others. How many understands that just a little bit anyway? Very little, okay. A mother has a child. Brother, when she goes to that hospital, a lot of death is working in her to bring that new life into the world. Can everybody see that? How many women have experienced that? I haven't, but my wife has. Thank goodness. I don't laugh. That principle will operate in your life. Paul put it this way. Always a bearing about in the body, the dying of the Lord Jesus Christ. Notice, in the body, the dying of the Lord Jesus Christ, that also that the life of Christ might be manifested in our lives. People say, I want the resurrected life to flow out of my life and bless people. Simple, not complicated. Die to your wishes. Your opinions, what you think, what you like, just die to it and bring life to your husband. Uh, I better say that another way. And bring life to your wife. Ain't getting no hallelujahs out of that either. <laughs> okay, R. W. straighten up. <clears throat> How many of you know Jesus said, Except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abides alone. There's a lot of people abiding alone today because they weren't willing to die. Somebody say amen. I'm giving you the secret. I'm giving you the secret of life. As long as you're going to do it, God ain't going to do it. But you die to you wanting to do it and let him do it now. Come on. you got to die to it. You want to know the secret that why my wife and me have been married for 60 years? Simple, not complicated. She has learned to die 
die, die, die. And you listen to that and you say, wow. Always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus Christ, that also that the life of Christ might be manifested in our mortal bodies. How many got it? That's the principle that brought salvation to all of us. That little baby that we are celebrating his birthday came to this earth to die that we might live. And the reason I'm alive today is because my wife was willing to die. Now, there's balance in all things. How many of you know I know balance in all things? Okay, but you're getting the gist of it. She, she knows the Word of God. If I ask her, honey, would you pour me a glass of tea? Boom, man, she right there ready to pour that tea. Good morning. How you doing? Good. <laughs> Listen to this. But if I told her to go down there and rob the First National Bank, how many of you know she wouldn't do it? Because the higher law, God's law, oversees mine. But she would pour me a glass of tea. Honey, my toenails need to be trimmed. I can't even see my toenails anymore. I was looking for my feet the other day and I couldn't find them. This, I'm building this shed right here. Some of you just hate to go to laugh. I know you. <laughs> See, I'm trying to get you to realize obedience is better. She'll cut my toenails. Honey, my back needs to be scratched. We have this rake out in my shed. <laughs> Lay down on the floor, honey. So I don't ask her to scratch my back anymore anyway. <laughs> honey, do I scratch your back? And he, opened, and, she, and he opened not his mouth. And she opened not her mouth. Wisdom, wisdom. It would embarrass her, so I'm not going to embarrass her. But I don't mind telling you she scratches my back. And I like it. <laughs> Go ahead and laugh, y'all. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm telling you, you guys, if you just, just listen to your pastor, you, you, you'll learn what life is all about. All right. That's a powerful thought. Wow. To us a child is born, to us a son is given. And the government shall be upon his, that is Jesus' shoulder, and his name, that is Jesus' name, shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father of Eternity, Prince of Peace. And turn to the next verse, and i got to move on because I had not got started yet. Of the increase of his government and of the peace there shall be no end upon the throne of David and over his kingdom to establish it, to uphold it with justice and with righteousness from the latter time forth, even forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. And we don't have to worry about it. It's going to happen. It's been prophesied. Go ahead and clap. Let me raise your faith level a bit. When you see all these prophecies that we just mentioned, has it happened? I just, I just said all of these prophecies, are you, uh, can you hear me? Am I, uh, all, right. <clears throat> all these prophecies that I just mentioned on the board up here, have they come to pass, most of them? Yeah. Well, if all of them have come to pass exactly like God said they would, why doubt anything in the future or the near future? Are you with me? Why doubt it? God has proven himself. And I just mentioned a few in the Old Testament. Now let's move on to something else here, which is really good. I want you to turn to John 1, 12, 13. St. John 1, 12 and 13. Start with 12. Now, let's get down to where we live. But to as many 
at the shield of faith that received and welcomed him, he, God, gave the authority, the power, the privilege, the right to become the children of God, that is, to those who believe in, a heave to, trust in, and rely on his name. Now look at that scripture. How did you become a child of God? God gave you the power. Notice this. As did, but as many as did receive and welcome him. This is why we invite people to come up and receive Christ into their heart. Christ in our heart is our only hope of glory. Now if you don't have Christ in your heart, you have no hope of glory. You have no hope whatsoever. You are without hope, Paul says that. This is why we tell people, receive Christ, that is, his spirit, into your heart. Because the Bible says in Galatians 2.23, Christ in our heart is our only hope of glory or our only hope of heaven. The Bible says the Holy Spirit bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. Now, Bring this down to where you live. Is the Holy Spirit bearing witness with your spirit that you are a child of God? I want to say that again. Is the Holy Spirit bearing witness to your spirit that you are a child of God? In other words, you, you, know, you, that, that the Holy, you just know. There's a knowing in there. There's a knowing. And, and if someone says, you believe in Jesus, and you say, yes. Well, stand, Susan, would you stand up? Susan? Yoo-hoo. Would you stand up? All right. Do you believe in Jesus? Yes. Bang! You can have a seat now. You're supposed to fall over dead. <laughs> now tell me, we know the Bible. Where is she at? <laughs> in heaven. Anybody ready to go now? Did you bring your gun? <laughs> we could send them all. How many wants to go now? <laughs> That's two of them. I only have two shells. <laughs> See, you get established into faith, and when the devil comes up and tells you you're not a child of God, you know you're a child of God because the Holy Spirit bears witness with your spirit. You are a child of God. You've been bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. God has redeemed you. You have been born again, not by the will of man, but by the will of God Almighty. God has chose you before the foundation of the world to be his child. You've been born again. Your spirit is a brand new spirit. Brother, if that don't uh, excite you, I'm just not going to give you no more money. <laughs> now look at that scripture and read it. All right, let's move to the next one real quick. Like John 3, 3 at 11. Real quick. I'm going to let you go early today. <laughs> well, I'm going to try anyway. Jesus answered him. Who's him? You know your Bible. Jesus answered Bob. No. Nicodemus. Remember that? I assure you, Nicodemus, most solemnly, I tell you that unless a person is born again, anew, from above, from above, from above, that's the work of God. God's Spirit. The reason you're a child of God, God chose you before the foundation of the world and did that miracle in your life and caused your inner man that was dead towards God was born anew, brand new, from above, from above, from above, from God, from God. Look at it. Unless a person is born again, unless one joins the shield of faith, he cannot, be born, he cannot see heaven. Unless a person eats oatmeal every morning, they'll never see heaven. Unless you do a whole lot of good works, you can't be born again by those good works. No. It's a work of the Holy Spirit. God Himself. I want you to grab this. You were lost. You were separated from God. You were going to a burning hell. And God intervened in your life and chose you and saved you and caused you to be born from above. Woo! Glory. Now, heaven is your home. And that blesses the socks off of me. 
That's why I wear two pairs of socks. Wow. All right, look at that. He cannot ever see or know, be acquainted with, and experience the kingdom of God. Somebody in here this morning, if you're lost, you don't even know what I'm talking about. You hear words, but you don't know what I'm talking about. I'm talking about a real experience with God Almighty through your faith in Jesus Christ. No, it doesn't mean you're going to be perfect. But brother, it means that you know him and he knows you. And he's done a work in your spirit, man. And you know he's working right today. I'm not talking about joining the church. I'm not talking about joining anything. I'm talking about the spirit of the living God has caused your spirit to be born again. Do you know that? See, I'm challenging you, but I want you to know it because if that rapture comes and you don't know it and you're not ready, you've not been born again, you're not going up because you're not in Christ. You see, I'm speaking because of love. Everybody say, Pastor Bob, Bob. is telling us us. all of this this. because he loves us. There's some things you can fool around with, but you cannot fool around with your eternity. You cannot fool around with this thing about heaven and hell. You got to know. The Bible says these things have been written. 1 John. 5, 13, these things have been written that you might know that you have eternal life. That you might know, not guess, you might know you have eternal life. You know that you've been born again. You know God is your heavenly Father. You know the blood of Christ has cleansed you from all sin. You know because the Spirit of God lives in you and He has let you know. I know I don't have to holler, but boy, we need to drive that into our being. Now, do you know? Do you know? Yesterday, when Susan been praying for our, one of my uh, nieces. She's my niece, right? I think so. Well, I got so many, it's hard to keep up with them. Man, time's going by and I hadn't started. <sighs> We've been praying she's got cancer. And if she don't get healed, she's out of here. So we went over to uh, J- John's Island yesterday at my daughter's house and had a big dinner with my nephew, and his wife, and all, some of his children, all which she was in, in there. She's 42 years old, beautiful woman. I knew, knew her when she was born, a little baby. <coughs> So far, it looks good. It looks good. It looks like things are sort of checked, but they took another test, and she won't know the next week whether it's all clear. If it's not, she's going to have to have her whole uh, breast removed. And uh, I said, God, please, what I want to know, because I know everything down here is temporary. So if you die at 40, if you die at 50, if you die at 60, you've just missed a bunch of problems. I see some of you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, 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 you can live to 80. Psalms 90, verse 10. If you're ready for a whole bunch more troubles, <laughs> you read that. Anyway, let's move from there, Bob. They might not understand that. Okay. <clears throat> I said, God, please. I, I, I got to talk to her about her soul. And don't you know, God just sets things up so beautifully. Anyway, we were all around this table and had another table in the other room, all the kids, and I say kids, they're 50 years old, 40 years old, 18, 20. I was the oldest one in the clan. And by the way, the best looking too. (laughs) 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 All right. uh, uh, (laughs) Cut. (laughs) All right. But anyway, I'm serious now. I mean, I have a passion for souls. When I go to see somebody... It's not to tickle them. It's to find out, do you know Jesus? Are you born again? Do you know you're born again? Because when you check out of here, 
I'm going to tell you something. There's no exits in hell. That's why I don't like it. I don't want it. There's no exit in hell. Once you get down in hell, that's it. That's it. It's all over. How many is cold? I'm just getting comfortable. She's freezing. Get your mother a, a, one of those covers back there. Would you do that, son? Appreciate it. She's sh shaking the whole church. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> that might be the Holy Ghost. I don't know. <laughs> All right. Man, I said, God, you know. But see, God just does it. Next thing you know, I'm sitting by her. And, and then my uh, nephew's wife, which is her mother, said, well, why don't you talk with Pastor Bob? You've been telling me you're not sure of your salvation. Boy, the door was open. Oh, man. And brother, I tell you what, I shared what Christ did for her. I told her what she needed to do and everything, and she received Christ. We prayed for her. And I said, now, if you die right now, where would you go? She said, heaven. Amen. See, when you, when, you, when you really are saved, I said when you really are saved, you know if you die, there's only one way for you to go, and that's upward. That's heavenly bound. My goodness, the devil don't want you down there in hell singing hallelujah, hallelujah. Drive him nuts. <laughs> no more laughing, Charles. <laughs> you didn't know I was just crazy, did you? <laughs> at least she's smiling at me. How y'all doing over there? You doing okay? Yeah, you never heard a preacher preach like this before, have you? Or have you? Huh? Never have, I thought so. <laughs> There's not many of me around, I tell you. But I believe in driving right down straight down through the road. You either is or you ain't. If you is, praise God, keep on isn't. But if you ain't, get on the track, get on the train, get on in Jesus, get saved. Let's move forward. Let's share the gospel with the world. That's why God left us down here. To share the gospel. We are alive. We're not dead. We're the people of God. We have a great inheritance kept for us in heaven. And no IRS is going to get a bit of it. No WXY or whatever they call them. It's kept for us in heaven. So you lost a million dollars. Nothing. When you get to heaven, you have trillions. Upon trillions. And eternity in a resurrected body. Do you know what it is to be in a resurrected body? Do you understand you can eat? Ice cream. Where's Willie at? You up there, Willie? Ice cream every day. Every day. What is heaven like? We won't talk about that today, but it's good. Real good. Just Jesus being there. And the, if you've ever been in a real strong anointing, I mean, where everybody's on the floor. I've been in church where everybody's on the floor. Some of you have too. It's been in this place. God just has, I mean, it's awesome. Just multiply that time, multiplication, whatever. The presence of God. It doesn't matter what you're doing, just in the presence of God. You could live like that forever and ever and ever. Jesus answered him, I assure you most solemnly, I tell you that unless a person is born again anew from above, he can not ever see or know, be acquainted with and experience the kingdom of God or experience even the spirit of God or the things of God because he's still dead. You've got to be born again from above. And brothers and sisters, if you are, you know it, and you go ahead and shout, I don't care. Hallelujah! Hallelujah. All right. Let's move real quick. Here we go. And there's much more I can say on John on, on that. Uh, turn to 1 Corinthians 5. I'm going to share two more. Oh, my goodness, it's 1 o'clock. All right, let's go through this one. Uh, 2 Corinthians 5.17. And I'll close on this. This, this chapter is only 20 verses. 
517. You're close. I wish I could start there. Take it verse by verse. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. That's, that, that's Chronicles. That's Chronicles. We're family, Willie. Therefore, if any person is engrafted, anybody in here engrafted in Christ, wave at me. Whoa! The Messiah, he is a new creation, a new creature altogether. The old previous moral and spiritual condition has passed away. Behold, fresh and new has come. I'm a brand new. What's that song? Help me sing that song, honey. What's that song about? I'm a brand new man. How's that song go, baby? Honey child, sweetheart, lover. I'm a new creation. I'm a brand new man. Oh, are passed away. I've been born again. More than I conquer. More who I am. Creation. I'm a brand new man. I'm a brand new man. <laughs> Hallelujah! This, hey man, the Lord has done great things. You're not an old sinner no more. God has made you a saint. You are holy, consecrated dedicated to the Lord God Almighty, and one day He's coming back for us. Glory to God. And we won't have to stop by Atlanta. We'll just go straight up. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Well, as much I can share, time's run out, but I love everybody. Merry Christmas. And don't forget who you are in Christ. Amen. If you've never received Christ as your personal Savior, come up and talk with me. Let's stand to our feet right now. Turn to somebody and tell them I'm a brand new creation. Go ahead. If you need to come.